What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you some exciting new details about Avowed, Obsidian's upcoming RPG set in the Pillars of Eternity universe following, of course, its showing at the Xbox Games Showcase. And while what they showed at that showcase was, I would say, more or less what was expected, I mean it was a really good trailer, mind you, the juicy stuff, the actual details you would want to know, came from Carrie Patel in a follow-up interview on the Xbox podcast, which is where all of this information is coming from. I'll try to drop a link to that down below as well, so you can watch the whole thing if you would like to. But this podcast actually showed a significant portion of the game, including several things I myself have wanted to see, and some things that were freshly revealed. So to get the biggest one out of the way right away, they've officially confirmed that a third-person mode is coming to the game, and while much of the footage here you'll see is not in third person, they did show this off a little bit, but it is confirmed to be in the game, which I think will make a lot of people happy, and while I would have been on board, anyway, it's great to see. Another thing that was announced directly in response to feedback, especially from their last few showings, was that they've been working on adding impact to melee combat especially, and while I don't think it's perfect, what they've shown here in this podcast does definitely show some improvements, including the trailer that they dropped. So would I say it's perfect? No, but it's definitely an improvement from where they started, which I think is great to see. But from there, let's talk about the new stuff. The trailer that they dropped at the Xbox Game Showcase was a story trailer, technically. It gave a little bit of detail about the story revolving around the living lands, which is what Carrie Patel here went on to elaborate about. Now, specifically, in classic Obsidian fashion, there's going to be a bunch of factions trying to solve the problem in their own way, and you get to pick and choose, basically, your way through that scenario. The problem infecting the living lands is the Dream Scourge, which we kind of already knew they named dropped that before, which is basically a soul plague. If you're unfamiliar with Pillars of Eternity, a ton of it just revolves around souls and soul energy, as that stuff manifests physically in the world of Aeora. And in this case, there is a plague relating to that, and all of these different factions have a different idea of how to go about fixing that problem, which makes up the major choices of the game, as you might imagine, and almost certainly there will be companions that represent each of those factions. And naturally, since it involves souls, animancy will be involved. Animancy in this world is essentially the study of souls, the science of it, so expect to see a lot of that there, and you can see a lot of their trademark technology and things on display in some of this footage. Now, another thing they showed off was a new companion called, I believe it's it's Yachtsley, might be butchering that, but she is of the Orlin race, and was described as a wizard and a bit of a live wire, a ball of energy, if you will. But one really cool thing besides just this companion reveal was some of what they talked about in dialogue options and whatnot, showing off some of the options that could be available to you based on either your attributes, your background, and other things depending on how you play through the game. But basically we got information here about character creation without seeing it directly, which came up especially because it was revealed that our character, no matter what, is apparently a godlike. Now, when people talk about godlikes and Pillars of Eternity, they tend to refer to them as a race unto their own, but that's not entirely true, because if you've heard about Avowed already, you might be aware that we can play as a human or an elf, which is still true. You see, godlikes in this world are capable of being pretty much any other race as a sort of base to what they are, because godlikes are effectively people who have been directly blessed by the gods in some way, which isn't quite as glamorous as it sounds, and this typically has physical manifestations manifestations in that person, like you can see the effect it has on your person, and that is actually true here. It was mentioned that as part of character creation, you'll have some customizable options as to what that physical manifestation is, but your character will still be a human or an elf. Now, what's more though, you might be wondering which god is responsible for this. Well, it's actually a mystery. You don't know as a character. And given how Pillars of Eternity 2 ended, I'm curious if they're going to do anything especially interesting with that, because as Pillars 2 also went into, being a godlike is not necessarily a good thing for reasons that are relevant to the plot of that game that are revealed right at the very end, so I don't want to spoil it here in this video, but basically being a godlike is not in and of itself necessarily a blessing. Especially since, just from a cultural standpoint, while many people are fascinated by godlikes as a race, a lot of other people are actually very suspicious of them, and depending on the type of godlike a person is, that is to say a godlike from a specific god that is not looked upon favorably or results in hideous deformities, those people might not even make it to adulthood because they are killed. So there's a lot of 
different reactions to what godlikes are. So in addition to being a human or elf, you'll also apparently be a godlike. But beyond just that, they also talked about our party camp. It looks like outside of exploring, we'll have access to a camp of sorts that serves naturally as a hub for all of our companions and whatnot and a place to talk about them and hear their banter, but also as a place to prepare for the upcoming journey via things like upgrading your equipment, which they showed off, which included expected things like rarity tiers for certain bits of gear etc. And you can kind of see some of the attributes they're playing around with here. But what's more, they also discussed leveling up quite a bit. And basically, every level you're going to get a point to put into one of these ability trees that they showed off. And basically, this tells me that they are in fact going for a classless system with some of these skill trees being divided up into things that would traditionally be associated with a specific class. So you can go like all in on the wizard tree, for instance, or mix and match it with the fighter tree to become a sort of battle mage. So while it looks like they're abandoning the class system as expected from the transition from a typical CRPG to something more action oriented. They're still retaining a lot of those features in these skill trees specifically, but you'll have some leeway there in terms of what is available. Now, while they didn't give answers to everything, like say how cipher magic works or how something like a chanter could be implemented, if at all, they did give us some details on some of the abilities that you can pick up. One in particular for the ranger actually allows you to enter a sort of stealth mode and stealth your way around enemies. And they also also said that this isn't strictly necessary to perform stealth. You can also engage in stealth. Otherwise, it will just be more difficult, as you might imagine. And I mentioned that specifically because they talked about stealth before, but they were a little cagey about it. And here they provided a direct answer. And while they're doing all of that, they also showed off a fair bit of world traversal, what moving through the world kind of looks like, even just simple stuff like jumping and moving around, which while not exactly earth shattering or anything, was interesting to see because it wasn't mentioned a ton up to this point, but we can see our character sort of moving through this 3D environment, which I thought was nice. And that, I would say, just about hits the highlights of what I took away from that podcast specifically, but there are a few other just interesting details, like for instance, Yachtsley, the new companion, is in the Living Lands to investigate a very specific type of people who, who were referred to as the godless, which I thought was kind of interesting, but obviously they didn't provide a lot of detail on that, but still pretty cool nonetheless. So that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. I'm really happy with how Avowed and, of course, the people behind its production have been engaging with the community and responding directly to criticisms that people have brought up from their previous showings and these new ones. And while someone like myself who loves the Pillar universe was always going to play this, I'm genuinely quite excited for it, as it looks to be very good from all the previews they've shown. And if I can't have a third Pillars of Eternity, this looks to be a decent alternative. But either way, if you would like more information about this game as it heads towards release, definitely like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, as I will most certainly be covering it all, as I'm very much so looking forward to this one. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.